Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. Today we will be making this clothespin bunny doll from Honey Bun Strips. She's fun and easy, so let's get started. To make my clothespin bunny, I'm going to start with a clothespin and also with two Honey Bun Strips. I've decided to go with a pink theme for this project and I've cut the Honey Bun Strips in half. So I'm just using about 22 inches of each. I am going to gather these up. I'm, I have my pleating attachment for my Bernina, but any machine should have a similar attachment. I'm gonna set it on one, which is the very tightest setting. And I'm gonna gather up along one edge of each of these strips, and then I'll be back. Here are my ruffles. And now I'm going to overlap this, the darker one over the lighter one, and I'm going to stitch this to the top like this. This will become the dress. Since these were both the same length, this is extra. So I'm going to cut this off and then this will become the dress, but I'm going to save this for later. First, we're going to make the bunny's face. Now, Here's my pattern, and it was easy to make. I just set my thumb here slightly on an angle, and I traced around it with my pencil, <laughs> and then I gave it a seam allowance like this. Now I would clean that up a little bit and that became my pattern. That's all there is to it. The, um, there's a mark right here. That's where I'm going to stop sewing. So the idea is that these two pieces of felt, I will seam around here and I'll stop right there. And then it's going to fit, just so you know where we're going, it's going to fit around here. I'm going to turn it, don't worry, the seam allowance will be turned and stuffed, and then this is going to be sewn together in the back. So for now, I'm going to seam this together right here and stop right here. Okay, I know you might be thinking, but Laura, what if my thumb is bigger than yours or smaller than yours? I'm not gonna leave you hanging. Okay, here are the sizes, here are the dimensions. One and three quarters from here to here. One and one quarter here. And one and one quarter here. This is a half an inch right here. And um, I'm just gonna set it on the graph. This is quarter inch graph paper so you can get a good shot of that. Now I've stitched around the face and the back is open and the bottom is half open. Now I'm gonna turn it right side out. There we go, I'm turning it right side out. And then just a little bit of polyfill to put in the nose. That is actually too much. It doesn't take very much to fill in this space. That looks good. And now, remember this is the front. So we want this, this leg opening to be front and back, not side to side, but front and back. And you can see how now I can put this around to the back like this, and then I'm gonna whip stitch this to close. I have a single strand of white quilting thread. I start at the top and this is going to be covered by the hat. So I'm just going to sew this just around and around. I don't know. I call this a whip stitch. I think it's a whip stitch. Just join the two sides. Just make it nice and tight. So as I get closer down here, I can actually sew them closer, if that makes sense. So I'm going in a little further and then I'll secure it down here and then I'll go back up just to make sure it's nice and tight. 
but again this is not going to show and now this little bit right here I always kind of want to pull that down a little like that okay so I'm going to knot off my thread and I'll be right back now let's embroider the face do a little triangle nose right in the front center. Kind of like that. Two eyes more toward the front of the face. So you can see them. And then we're going to do like a little smile that comes out on each side. There's one side. <laughs> it's always hard for me to get them to match. So there's our little face. Now you can add details if you like, um, maybe eyelashes or whatever you like. But to get started, we're just gonna do black French knots for eyes. And then that's three strands of black embroidery floss. Okay, so I'm going to enter at the back of the head. That'll be all concealed by the hat come out at one of the eyes. This is three strands of black floss. Wrap three times, one, two, three. Reinsert the needle, go across to the second eye. Hold those loops closely, pull it through. There's my first eye. Then over here, we'll do the second eye. And you can have the eyes a little further back if you like, it's just kind of personal preference. And the other thing that I want to mention is that I am going to secure this with glue after I get the face embroidered. I'll put some glue under here to secure it even more. But I don't like to get the glue in when I'm trying to embroider. So I'm just going to finish off the thread in the back here. And then to embroider the nose and the mouth, I have two strands of pink floss. So I'm going to go through from the back of the head, come out here at the top of the triangle, and do about five stitches or so. This is a satin stitch. So we're just going straight across. Um, it can be sort of like a triangle or sort of even a bar will work. Just straight down. You can only do three stitches if you like, four stitches, two stitches. It doesn't really matter. It's going to turn out great. Don't worry. I think I'll do one more. And now to do the little smile, I'm going to just going to back stitch, maybe three stitches. So here we go. See how I came out right here on the purple line? This is disappearing marker. So one, two, and then three. And then over to the other side, and we'll do one, two, three. Aw. They're not even. They don't look the same, but they look really cute. And sometimes it's hard to tell before the disappearing marker goes away, but I can tell it's gonna be super cute. Okay, so I'm gonna secure my thread. And now I'm gonna add a little hot glue back here. And I'm gonna press that into that glob of glue. Okay, that looks good. Now for a little rosy cheeks. I have some blush on a Q-tip and I'll just do a little cheek here. Little cheek here, cute. And then we'll add some whiskers. I'm going to use the same white quilting thread that I used to sew up the back of the head. So I have a double strand. I'm going to tie it off in an overhand knot. Okay, so about an inch and a half from the end. I'm not pulling that knot too tightly. 
you can go through here, so right behind the nose, or you can go through over here, out by the cheeks. They're both cute. I think I'll do it out front here. So I'm going to go here until that knot rests gently against the surface of the face. I'm not yanking it so that it pops through the fabric. And then I'm going to do a second overhand knot right here. And I'm going to have that knot rest right against the surface like that. And then remove the point of the needle. And then I'll trim the second side to sort of match the length of the first. I think um, two whiskers on each side is enough. It looks good to me. And, um, but you can add more if you like. I'm gonna make the hat from this, um, this pink felt. I have a, I think it was one and three quarter inches that I traced for a circle. And then I, took the pattern and I folded the circle in half and then I folded it in quarters. Then I opened it up and I removed one quarter. And this is the pattern for the hat. So I cut that from the pink felt. Here you can see it better. This is going to be the hat pattern. So this, I like the dress to be super fluffy and ruffly. So that's why I use the tightest setting on my machine. And I found that if I use a half of a strip for each piece and just cut that piece off and I'm going to seam up this edge, this will be the back, then I can just insert this and it's about exactly right. So I'm gonna seam this and I'll be right back. Here we go, here's the dress. I seamed at the back and now I'm turning it right side out and that is plenty of room to insert the clothespin. And I like the feet showing, so I'm gonna put it about right up to the, to the neck. There will be some arms in there and a bow from the bonnet, so you don't have to be way up like this, but just maybe a quarter of an inch below the edge of the white felt. And I'm going to glue this to secure with the seam in the back. So for the arms, I have a strip of felt that's a quarter of an inch wide and four and a half inches long. Let's see how this looks. Okay, that's about right. So I'm gonna just round off the ends like a little bunny paw. <laughs> that looks good. Maybe I'll use my big scissors. And if you're very ambitious, you could even sew some little lines, some little pink lines, like little paws. So I will fold this in half and put a smudge of glue right in the center and place that right at the back of her neck. Then her hands are gonna come around to the front, but I'm not ready to, um, to do that yet. I just wanna get the back center secured. Okay, now you'll remember that we already cut the hat. That looks good, it's bright pink ribbon. This is 3 8 it's satin, it's offre. And I'm gonna cut a fairly long piece, 18 inches. Now take the ribbon and fold it in half with the right sides together, then I'm going to seam up this seam right here, okay, just this little seam, with the ribbon sandwiched inside, like this. It can be at the top, it can be in the middle, I'm going to put it in the middle. And just so you know where we're going, once this is seamed right here, I'll turn it right side out. And then these ribbons will come around the outside of the bonnet and tie beneath her chin. Okay, so here's the hat. I'm turning it right side out. And these ribbons will come around and tie beneath her chin. I think I'm gonna trim a little bit of this seam allowance right here. But before we do that, we're going to add the ears. And the ears are not going to be attached to the head. They're actually just gonna go through the hat so that when the hat um, is tied on, we're gonna glue it too and tie it on, 
then the ears will be part of the hat. Here's the ear pattern. Here, I'll put this down so you can see it. It is three quarters of an inch wide and four inches long. Then I just folded it both ways and cut this side to a point and this side just gently, not all the way to a point so that it would stay together like that. And then I cut this piece out from white felt and added a little bit of blush to the inside of the ears. I'm gonna cut some slots in the hat left and right of the seam. So about like this, it doesn't matter. They don't have to be perfect. They can be this way or they can be this way. They don't have to be exactly the same distance apart, you know, from the edge because you kind of want the, the ears, that they don't have to both be exactly the same. Okay, so you see how I'm, sometimes I'm working and I forget to talk. Um, here, let's use these tweezers. Um, the, the ears are gonna go through those little slots like that. Okay, cute. That's all there is to it. Listen, there, there are a lot more complicated and sophisticated ways to, you know, to create something like this, but I'm just trying to make it very simple. There's no pleating of the ears. There's no sewing them to the head. We're not trying to make them stick straight up. We're just letting them flop over. And then I'm gonna actually securely glue this hat to the back of the head and then tie the knot. So this is how it's going to look. I'm gonna add a bunch of glue to the inside here. And then press the back of the head into the hat Kind of hold on to it for a second. Oh, and you can make this hat circle bigger and you can also can decorate the hat. Like you could add some rickrack around the edge or some trim or something like that. It can be up to like three inches, the circle, and it'll be really cute and just fine. Okay, now I'm gonna tie a bow under her chin, I'm gonna put it to one side. So it's a big old floppy bow and I'm gonna leave it big and floppy. I'll put a little bit of glue there, go like this and trim the streamers. That's gonna be cute. Now I pulled these arms around, kind of cross them over here a little bit to the side so that, the, so that they show <laughs> beneath this big old bow. And I have a little clump of um, little paper forget-me-nots and these can be added to the hat, which is cute, or to her hands or even to her bow. So I think I'll just add one to her hat. I'm gonna put it under the front of her hat, like that, like that. So I'm just going to overlap her little paws and hot glue them to the dress, like that. I have my pink baker's twine um, threaded onto a nice big needle. It has to be big to accommodate the twine. And I'm sewing through the head, not just through the hat, but actually through the head. There we go. I'll tie a little overhand knot. Aw, there she's so cute. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe.